If you would like to know how to create this faux leather steampunk album, then stay tuned and I will exactly show you how. Hi, here's Max and it's about time for a new mini album. Today I'm using empty kitchen paper rolls. Folded in half, they are a little bit longer than toilet paper rolls and we will need this length to create an interesting border later on. Today I'm using glycerin, which I got from the pharmacy and which I'm mixing with water at a ratio of one part of water and two parts of glycerin. I'm spraying the solution onto the flattened rolls with a mini mister and carefully rubbing it into them. As soon as the pieces are wet enough, I'm crumbling them to break the fibers of the paper. At the same time, the glycerin will wrap around the broken fibers and glue them together again. By this, the paper will become very smooth and flexible and almost feels like leather. As long as the paper is still moist, I'm embossing all the pieces with different embossing folders. And then we have to get them totally dry. And when I'm saying dry, I mean really dry and not simply dried on the surface with the heat tool. I recommend to let it dry overnight, maybe on the radiator. And your patience will be rewarded with totally smooth and wonderfully embossed pieces that will serve as the pages of the album. And now we have to bring the leathery feeling together with a leathery look. And so I'm using different distressings for that. You will find a full list of all the supplies I'm using in the description box under this video. And here you can see the preliminary result. Now you will see why I'm working with the longer kitchen paper rolls. I'm cutting the edges with an ornament die to give them an interesting look. The tags for the pocket I'm creating out of simple black cardstock and forming the top of each tag by using a tag punch. The bottom will simply be cut to the correct length and the corners will be rounded with a corner chamber. As all the pages are inked with distress ink, I'm now using glossy medium gel to seal the surface and give it a silky shine. And now the pages pretty much look like old leather. Each of them gets a tag and then we are moving to the cover. For this I'm using a piece of a paper shopping bag and again using the water glycerin solution on it. And again the solution will be rubbed in before the paper is crumbled again to break the fibers. And of course this piece also needs to be totally dry before moving on. For the cover I'm using thick cardboard, which is a quarter of an inch wider than the pages are. And now I'm using matte medium gel to adhere the cardboard onto the paper, leaving a gap between the pieces that is as wide as the cardboard is thick. And after everything is dry again, all the edges will be covered with double-sided tape. Now I'm cutting back the excess to an inch, leaving an eighth of an inch at each of the corners. Then I'm removing the cover paper of the tape and moving the whole piece over the table so that the paper wraps tightly around the edges. And of course I'm doing the same on the upper edge. The edges of the paper will now be adhered by using simple craft glue that will dry totally clear. So it doesn't matter if the glue sips out from underneath while pressing the paper firmly onto the cardboard. At the small sides I'm first wrapping the corners like I would wrap a parcel and then again adhering the paper onto the cover with the liquid glue. And again the same on the other side. And of course I'm using an embossing folder again on the cover before having another break to get the cover totally dry again. And same as the pages, I'm using the distress inks on the cover and sealing it afterwards with glossy medium gel. For the hinge system, I'm using a piece of black cardstock that is slightly smaller than the cover. 
I'm scoring this twice at half an inch and once at three eighths of an inch. And this I'm repeating six times. And then I'm folding the half inch strips and adhere double sided tape to them. Afterwards, I'm removing the cover paper and glue the half-inch strips together so that they are forming the hinges onto which we will tuck the pages later on. I'm pressing the hinges very firmly together and folding them several times to each side to make them flexible. All corners of the hinges will be cut diagonally for the pages to slip on them much easier. And now I want to introduce you to stone paper. You may already know this very tough and almost undestroyable faux paper. But it can be easily cut wonderfully embossed and die-cutted and, likewise, any other paper colored with any kind of ink or paint. So actually you can do anything with it that you would usually do with paper, but it is extremely robust and absolutely ideal as the cover of our spine. I'm now punching six holes into the paper and fill them with eyelets. The middle one is a little bit tricky, but it is pretty much manageable when folding the piece at the right places. Now I'm threading an old shoelace through the holes and tie a bow at the top. And this whole piece I'm now adhering onto the spine by using the liquid glue again. For the inner parts of the cover, I'm again preparing two pieces of paper rolls, but this time they will be cut open and folded to build a pocket. The whole process is the same as on the pages and the cover before. And now it's time to bring everything together. The hinge system will be the first and will be covered with liquid glue all over and then adhered directly onto the inner spine. It will be pressed firmly onto the cardboard and also including the spaces between the hinges. And this will be followed by the two pockets on the inner covers. These will be adhered with craft glue again and the pockets will be closed only at the sides. Once again, the excess glue can simply be wiped off with the fingers, as it will dry completely clear. All the hinges will now be covered with double-sided tape. 
but to make the connection to the pages as long lasting as possible I'm using the liquid glue in addition to that. The page itself will simply be tucked onto the hinge that disappears in the pocket of the page. For time reasons I'm only showing you two pages. But I promise I'm doing all the pages in the same way and you don't miss anything essential. For the closure I'm punching a hole into the back cover and fill it with an eyelid. I'm threading a chain through it as well as through a metal clip. This turned out to be a little bit fiddly but finally I made it. And I just wanted to say that your opinion is of most importance to me. So I would love to get your answer to the little question that is popping up now. Simply choose one of the given answers and I will do my best to fulfill the wish of the majority. And of course many thanks for that in advance. The clip will now be clipped onto the side and thereby closes the album. I got a lot of requests to do a steampunk album. And so I will use the opportunity to embellish the album in the steampunk style. I'm using some gears and buttons, which I'm adhering onto the cover by using the liquid glue again. Well, and this is how it finally turned out. As you just saw, I put the gears and even more buttons onto the front cover. The spine holds the holes and the shoelace. And I left the back cover as it is to show the wonderful old embossed leathery look. The inner pockets are holding two smaller tags with package twine. On top of the pocket I put a metal clock. And as usual the little pieces of craft paper will show the spots for the photos. There is always one element on each side under which a photo can be tucked. By this the photos will perfectly integrate into the page as if they had always been there before. Also the tags in the side pockets offer space for photos or can be used for journaling. To keep everything together I also put some package twine around these tags. And as shown before the album can be closed with the metal clip at the side or at the top. And that concludes the album for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, I would love to get a thumbs up and a comment. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe, because this is the way to show that you like what I'm doing and you will be immediately notified as soon as a new video will be uploaded. If you want more inspiration, you can click on the other album videos here on the page. Or if you are watching from a mobile device, you can get there from the info cards popping up now or the links in the description box below. I thank you so much for watching and hope to catch you next time again. Bye bye!